following take post. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Steve Campbell Wright. I am one of the governors of the Shrine of Remembrance. And with Four Wing taking post behind me and completing the set for today's commemoration, I welcome you all. On behalf of the board and trustees, you are most welcome here to Melbourne Shrine of Remembrance, either in person or viewing online. We at the Shrine celebrate our diversity and our connection to community. And we recognise the Bungwurrung people as the traditional custodians of the land on which we hold today's commemoration and throughout the year where we commemorate the service and sacrifice of those who have given service and their lives during war. Welcome today to the commemoration for the B-24 Liberators the aircraft that served so well in Europe and in the Southwest Pacific area. And today's commemoration, we reflect on those who gave their service and those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. May I please welcome our Master of Ceremonies for this morning, Squadron Leader Peter Meehan. Thank you, uh, Governor Steve Campbell-Wright. Uh, you've all been welcomed into this beautiful, beautiful sanctuary at the Shrine of Remembrance, but I'd also like to acknowledge that on the World Wide Web today, we are being viewed by an audience via the camera live from the Shrine to wherever, anywhere, wherever you are, welcome, you're a part of the B-24 Liberator Commemoration Service, and you are very welcome indeed. Let me call firstly, message of welcome by Ms. Lynn Gorman, President of the B-24 Liberator Memorial Australia. Lynn. Thank you very much, Peter. Squadron leaders, Steve Campbell Wright, Shrine Governor, Group Captain Carl Schiller, retired, our patron of the B24 Liberator Memorial Australia, Mr John Clarkson, President of the Air Force Association Victoria, and Wing Commander Rob Gill, Commanding Officer, Number 21, City of Melbourne Squadron. Ladies and gentlemen, I sincerely welcome you all to this annual commemorative event here at the Shrine of Remembrance. I'll just note that we have received apologies from Mr. Alex Au, Department of Transport and Planning, Councillor Jenny Barrera, Mayor of Wyndham City Council, Mr. David Gardner, RAAF History and Heritage Section, Mr. Tim Pallas, Member for Werribee, and Mr. Vern Roberts, one of our association's World War II veterans. And unfortunately this year we don't have any of our veterans present. I think it's the first time since we started um, holding the service that that's the case. Just an indication of the age that they've now reached since the end of World War II. We come together once again for several reasons. One is to remember the crucial role played by B-24 Liberator long-range heavy bombers in World War II, especially in the air war in the Pacific. They were a critical part of American and Australian air power in this theatre in the later years of the war. Of course, aircraft are nothing without dedicated crew and support staff. And so we pay tribute to the men and women, both air and ground crew, who served with these aircraft. We acknowledge their service with immense gratitude. Ever since its inception, one of the aims of the B-24 Liberator Memorial Australia has been to serve as a memorial to all those who served with Liberators. We are most grateful that we can hold this annual commemorative service at the Shrine of Remembrance, assisting us to fulfil this memorial function as well as through the work of our volunteers in the World War II hangar 
and our museum in Werribee. This year, the possibility of another major war perhaps seems more acute now than at any other time since 1945. Such a conflict could include nuclear weapons. It's likely that there would be extensive use of relatively new weaponry such as drones, as has occurred in Russia's war against Ukraine, and of cyber attacks to disable enemy assets. A frightening prospect if we think of all of that. But my hope is, of course, that a major conflict will be averted, including in the Eastern Europe, in the Middle East, and closer to home in the South China Sea, and that peace will prevail. Meanwhile, I trust this service will provide you with time to contemplate what war has meant in the past and to think specifically of the service and sacrifice of all those involved with B-24 Liberator aircraft during World War II and to review the significant contribution these aircraft and their crews made to Allied victory. In conclusion, I thank those at the Shrine of Remembrance who facilitated this event, especially Mr Dale Capron. I also thank our patron, Carl Schiller, for his unfailing assistance. And I thank Squadron Leader Peter Meehan and Chaplain Keith Yanyan, Lanyon, as well as Air Force Band Bugler Corporal Jason Reeve and all others who contribute to today's service. Thank you. Thank you, President Lynn. President Lynn Gorman. For the first prayer, I invite Chaplain Keith Lanyon. Let us pray for the nations. Creator God, your concern is the universe, and yet you still love and attend to the needs of the least of us. And so we pray for our nation, our politicians, our defence force, and all our people. May our efforts to seek peace and harmony within the world succeed. Grant to us all the same courage and convictions, the same comradeship and service as was shown in all the great struggles of our country for a true and lasting peace. Bless with courage and strength all those in the Australian Defence Force moved to take up arms if necessary to protect and serve our nation. We also seek that you bless, encourage and give strength to those who have already served their country, those who still suffer disabilities, sickness or injuries received in conflict, those who grieve at the loss of a loved one and those bereft of a father or mother's care and protection. May they all know the peace that only you can give. Hear our prayers, we ask. Amen. World-renowned poem, High Flight, written by John Galeski McGee, Jr., High Flight, will be presented by Lynn Gorman. Lynn, step forward. Thank you again, Peter. Now, I've read this poem on successive years and I've wondered whether we should change it, but I haven't because I think it is just a, a marvellous expression of appropriate sentiments for this service. So, High Flight by John Gillespie McGee, Jr. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter-silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. 
wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious, burning blue, I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace, where never lark or ever eagle flew. And while with silent lifting mind I've trod the high, untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand and touched the face of God. Now for the B-24 Liberator commemorative address, Group Captain Carl Schiller, retired, is patron B-24 Liberator Memorial Australia. A grateful nation acknowledges the service of RAAF men who flew and maintained the B-24 Liberator. That was assigned to number 12, 21, 23, 24, 25, 99, 102 squadrons and stows on special operations with 200 and 201 flights. We should also remember the fourth generation capability of number, one, uh, number seven RAAF training unit at Toucanwall in, Vic in uh, New South Wales. But today, I'd like us to remember 59 Australian soldiers and 91 others that were severely injured as a result of a B-24 Liberator crash during the Second World War. At 04.35 hours, on the Tuesday, the 7th of September, 1943, at an airfield called Seven Mile Drome, or Jackson's Field, which is situated just outside Port Moresby, a horrendous crash occurred. The aircraft was a B-24D model, serial number 42-40682, flown by a young 21-year-old pilot who had 420 hours on type. The aircraft belonged to the 304 Bombardment Group of the 34 Bomb Group of the 5th United States Army Air Force. It was named Pride of the Corn Huskers. The airfield, unlike a lot of the wartime airstrips, provided no significant airmanship challenges. It was in a very cleared space, the runway was unimpeded. It had a thousand metre open space at the end of the runway. And on the direction of the takeoff, there was a line of trees that ran on the starboard side of the runway. Just off to the right of those line of trees was the 7th Australian Division marshalling area. There at the time, there was 134 trucks holding, sorry, 18 trucks holding 134 Australian soldiers that were ready to embark on C-47 to, to go forward to engage the enemy. Those young soldiers were from the 2nd, 33rd Infantry Battalion. The aircraft took off in heavy mist and never gained sufficient height by the time it got towards the end of the runway, veered right and crashed into the convoy. 
On board was 2,800 gallons of fuel, four 500 pound bombs. Two bombs exploded immediately, the third exploded moments later. For those that died instantly, it was a godsend. The others were severely injured and burnt, and given the remote locality and such the size of the disaster, the appropriate medical aid was not available. And many died after several days. The Australian government did not publicise the incident because at the time, Australia community was under severe stress with the possible possibility of an invasion of the Japanese. There were memorials erected in the hometown of the 11th, 11 crew members of the B-24 and there is a memorial plaque on the Anzac Memorial Centre in Sydney to the event. It is one of the greatest aviation tragedies in Australian history. So I ask you to say a prayer for those courageous young men. I also pay tribute to the tremendous work the B-24 Liberator Restoration Australia has done over the last 30 odd years in restoring a B-24M as a living memory of those aviation days where it can connect the legacy of the Australian Flying Corps to the aviation in the RAAF that we are experiencing. Thank you. Thank you, Patron Schiller. And in the sanctity of our own minds, as we reflect and pay homage to the lost bravery men and women of the B-24 world, let us also remember those in the European theatre and war in the Pacific. Now to the prayer of thanksgiving. Chaplain Keith Lanyon. Let us pray. Lord, God of peace, justice and mercy, we thank you that your spirit moves the hearts of men and women, young and old, that we see the needs for freedom and for what is right and just. We praise you that through this spirit, men, women and children have scorned safety and ventured all in great and noble acts known and unknown. Throughout history they've done this and we believe Lord God that through your merciful love these acts and the efforts of nations in seeking peace and better relations with each other will finally overthrow the forces of evil, of greed and aggression and bring about the peace and security of this world. So hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. The Shrine Guard take post. To the wreath laying as part of our commemorative service today, I invite the following to step forward when called. First, Lynn Gorman, President B24 Liberator Memorial Museum.
I invite patron Carl Schiller, group captain Schiller, patron of the Liberator Museum to step forward. I invite Wing Commander Rob Gill, Commanding Officer, 21 Squadron, City of Melbourne. Air Commodore John Clarkson retired. Step forward, please. To read the Ode to Remembrance, I invite Mr. Paul Rourke to step forward, please. Paul, please stand. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Lest we forget.
shrine guard dismount. I invite the young men and women, the cadets of Four Wing, to follow the shrine guard out of the sanctuary. Step forward, please. So, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and our live streaming audience, this concludes the 2024 B24 Liberator commemorative service right here in the sanctuary of the Shrine of Remembrance. Those of you with a poppy, please feel free to step forward and place your poppy with a silent prayer into the urn adjacent to the Remembrance Stone. Peter Meehan, Governor, Squadron Leader, retired. Good morning. Yes, it's 11.30. And enjoy your day. A day of remembrance. Thank you, one and all.